In an ideal world, the compost that we produce for our gardens would be perfectly ready exactly when we needed it. And with the right mix of ingredients and a well-made compost pile that is adequately turned and given enough time, I think this is possible. But that's often not the case, and many growers, including myself, often want to end up adding compost to a garden beds before it's ready, before it's had enough time to decompose or reach that ideal crumbly texture. This is especially the case with the small-scale community composting facility that I operate, where a number of different people add a wide variety of different materials that is usually not chopped up very well or mixed adequately, and I definitely don't turn it enough. There are always lots of clumps and compressed blocks that I'd rather break up before adding to the soil. I usually find lots of partially decomposed woody material, a fair number of stones, and pieces of plastic or cutlery or other debris that is mistakenly or carelessly added in with the kitchen compost, as well as pieces of twine and other materials from the gardens. I really don't want any of this stuff in my garden soils, and I needed a simple process to remove it all. I have seen a number of different methods for sieving compost, but the best one seemed to be a simple sloped metal mesh or screen where you shoveled compost up onto the top and let gravity do the rest. I ended up building one from a metal screen that I got from my neighbour, which was 60 centimetres wide and 180 centimetres long, and it had holes about 25 millimetres wide, or about one inch. I built a frame out of some scrapped wood and fixed the screen to the bottom of the frame with large staples and added posts to keep it upright. It was simple to use, shoveling compost up onto the top of the frame and the small particles dropped through the holes and the larger pieces tumbled down the slope of the screen, breaking up along the way. This simple piece of equipment does a remarkably good job, leaving a pile of sieved compost underneath and most of the stones, undecomposed material and a lot of the foreign objects end up at a pile at the bottom of the screen. But I found that I needed to shovel this pile of unsieved material back up onto the screen two or three more times to break up the clumps, especially if the compost was wet. I decided to add stilts to the bottom end of the sieve and a few pieces of wood to divert the material that tumbled off the end of the screen into a bucket that I was able to fit underneath, making it a lot easier to collect this unsieved material. Once the one bucket was full, I could swap it with an empty bucket and dump the contents onto the top of the sieve, which was easier than shoveling to collect the material. This involved a lot more lifting, which was compounded by the sieve being higher, which required a lot more upper body strength, but it definitely speeded up the process. After a few runs down the sieve, I had a mix of tough clumps, undecomposed pieces, stones, plastic, and other unwanted material. I could manually pick out the larger pieces of plastic and stones, but separating it fully was a tricky enough task in a bucket. For quite a while, I would simply dump anything left in the bucket back into a new compost pile to go through the composting process again, rather than put in the work to separate it further, or getting rid of it in some other way. This had the unfortunate impact of increasing the amount of stones and plastic and unwanted material in subsequent batches of compost. I wasn't getting rid of the stuff, I was simply making more work for myself later. Trying to figure out ways to make this sorting of material a lot easier, I decided to try to set the sieve in a more horizontal position, resting on four posts, even though this seemed counterintuitive at first. Of course, in this horizontal position, I couldn't make use of gravity to work over the clumps, but I didn't need to shovel the material so high, and I only needed to lift it once, so there was a lot less heavy lifting. This work was replaced by more work with a spade, shovel, or by hand to break up the pieces on the screen. As I was working over a larger area, it was much easier to see and pull out the pieces of plastic, uh, the undecomposed material, and to push the stones to the end of the screen and into a bucket. It was also an easier height to work out with less bending and lifting. It was perhaps slower, but it was a lot more thorough with less plastic and stones added back into the composting system. The compost could be sieved directly into a wheelbarrow underneath, or in a pile, or even in a large bag to mature for longer. The downside of this horizontal orientation was that larger material was able to pass through the holes, including some pieces of plastic, and a lot of sticks were able to get through. It was also an issue that smaller stones were more likely to get stuck in the screen, which made it harder to use a shovel, and this was perhaps the biggest hassle of this orientation. After trying out a few things, I found that filling a bucket with the original compost and then turning it upside down onto the screen, and then sliding it back and forth worked much better. A few passes over the mesh and most of the compost would have fallen through the screen, and it was quicker at reducing it to a small pile of cleaner material that it was easier to manually separate. 
I still had to handle the bulk of the compost material several times. Once lifting it onto the sieve, then transferring the sieved compost into a bucket or a wheelbarrow, and then spreading it over the garden bed. As I often use a bucket to transfer the finished compost into the garden, I realized that this meant that I could actually sieve the compost directly over the garden bed. There was of course more work dragging the sieve around, but I think there was less work in the end as I only had to handle the compost material once. I'd fill the buckets from the compost pile, take them to the garden, and then sieve directly over the soil surface. This was also quite convenient when I needed to spread compost over part of the garden, but I hadn't got around to sieving a batch of compost yet. I could essentially sieve the compost on demand. Now that I have this piece of equipment in the gardens, I'm starting to use it for different things, not just for sieving compost. I have found it really useful to use this sieve to help clear rough and weedy ground. By cutting out chunks of soil and weeds and placing it onto the sieve, I can bash it around and separate out all of the biomass from the soil which falls through the sieve, especially the problematic weed roots, and it also clears out the stones at the same time. It is a fair amount of work to dig out all of this soil, but it's possibly the fastest way to go from really rough ground to loose, cleared soil that is ready for shaping into beds and planting. I've even tried using the sieve to help dig out a few beds of potatoes, which helps to ensure that no tubers are left in the soil to regrow the next season. This is perhaps most useful in the intensive garden, where I usually double dig the beds, as this is several jobs done in one pass. Harvesting potatoes, double digging the soil, as well as helping to clear out any stones and weed roots. I've even found it to be an effective tool to help to thresh the small amount of wheat that I grew this season. While I originally built this simple sieve to help improve the quality of my compost, it's become one of the most useful pieces of equipment in my gardens, especially as I'm still clearing a lot of ground. It is interesting how the uses of a tool will change over time, and how rarely I use it in the original sloped configuration that I built it in. Of course, different designs and uses will fit different people and contexts, and as my gardens evolve, no doubt my own uses and needs will change. I've been thinking about how I could adapt it in the future, mainly to have legs that are adjustable to a variety of different slopes and heights. It would also be nice if it was lighter and collapsible to make it easier to move around and to store. It could be useful to inlay an additional screen with smaller hole sizes when I wanted really fine compost, but perhaps it's better to build a number of different sieves with different screen sizes, shapes and uses. But for now, I'm quite content with this simple and rugged piece of equipment that I hacked together a couple of years ago. And it's been quite interesting to watch how my approach to some of the key tasks in the gardens has changed since I've had the use of this tool. It's been about five weeks since I released my previous video, and this delay was caused by an unexpected and quite dramatic event that took place, but more on that in my next video. For now, I'm glad to be back making videos, and I'm planning to do a lot more in the coming months. If you like my videos and like the work that I'm doing, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to support my work even more, please check out my Patreon page linked here or in the description below. But most importantly, thank you for watching.